Apple's i9 MacBook Pro has been on the market for about a month now, and based on Geekbench 4 CPU scores, it outperforms last year's top spec 5K iMac and is nearing the performance of Apple's $5,000 iMac Pro. At $3,500, it seems like a great alternative to the 5K iMac. You can take it on the go and you'll get even better performance, right? Well, that's not the whole story. This impressively thin laptop is known for thermal throttling during extended heavy workloads. On the other hand, the 5K iMac has a great cooling solution, and it also allows you to access the RAM. So we bought the 8GB of RAM model and added in an extra 32GB of RAM, bringing the total price of our 5K iMac to only $3,000. It also has the added benefit of packing a Radeon Pro 580 graphics chip, which gets literally double the performance compared to the MacBook Pro's 560X. Apple also sells an external eGPU with that same exact 580 graphics chip, as well as a 5K Thunderbolt 3 display which uses the same panel as the 5K iMac, which will get you a similar desktop experience but at a much higher total price tag of $5,500, not counting a keyboard and mouse. So how do those incredibly high MacBook Pro benchmarks translate into the real world? Starting with Cinebench R15 CPU test, the MacBook Pro outperforms the 5K iMac, but that was a pretty quick test that doesn't consider thermal throttling. While testing four runs back to back, the lowest score we saw was actually 979 due to throttling, with an average score of 1017. Moving on to video gaming performance, we tested Unigen's Heaven Benchmark, and the 5K iMac completely destroyed the MacBook Pro. We then added the eGPU, and it was still running worse than the 5K iMac. Now onto photo editing performance, the 5K iMac again tops the MacBook Pro, and the only reason seems to be thermal throttling. Now let's do some video editing, starting with the Bruce X Benchmark in Final Cut Pro. To our surprise, the 5K iMac finished almost three times faster than the i9 MacBook Pro, thanks to the 580 GPU. And even when we added the Blackmagic eGPU, it was still almost twice as slow, again because of thermal throttling and less efficiency while using the 580 GPU externally. Then we stabilized a 20 second 4K clip, and the 5K iMac finished in only 7.5 seconds, almost twice as fast as the MacBook Pro. Next up, we exported a 5 minute 4K clip with added effects, and the 5K iMac again finished faster than the i9 MacBook Pro. Adding the eGPU made export times even worse for the MacBook. We then rendered a 4K Canon RAW clip, and the 5K iMac was more than twice as fast as the MacBook Pro. But interestingly, we're finally seeing some positive results with the Blackmagic eGPU, mostly because this Canon codec puts a very heavy workload on the GPU. Not only did export times improve, but timeline smoothness while actually editing was increased with the eGPU, but still nowhere near the 5K iMac. Now onto our final test, exporting HEVC footage to HEVC. For the first time in our testing, the MacBook Pro is now exporting almost three times as fast as a 5K iMac. This is because the MacBook Pro's 8th gen CPU is much more efficient at encoding and decoding HEVC files. For some reason, using the eGPU with the MacBook Pro actually slowed it down. Let's talk about the number one top rated email marketing app for Mac, Direct Mail, where you can quickly and easily create and send great looking email newsletters with in-depth reports that show you who's clicking, reading, and sharing them. Growing your mailing list is easy with custom subscribe forms for your website that automatically sync to Direct Mail. It integrates with over a thousand other apps and services, and it can even send email campaigns automatically. It's free to download and get started, and Apple Insider viewers can get an exclusive offer by heading to directmailmac.com AI. From all of this testing, we can easily conclude a few different things. First of all, the eGPU isn't worth it for the 15-inch MacBook Pro like it is for the 13-inch, which saw huge editing and gaming performance gains, even allowing us to play Fortnite at 5K with playable frame rates, but still worse than the 5K iMac. If you care about maximizing performance, you'd be better off buying a top-spec 2017 5K iMac and using the money saved from not buying the eGPU and external display to buy a base 15-inch MacBook Pro for on-the-go use. Overall, the 15-inch i9 MacBook Pro is still a great laptop if you want awesome performance on the go, but the thermal throttling makes it perform worse than the 5K iMac in many scenarios. We're expecting the iMac to see a refresh or maybe even a complete redesign soon, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on more videos when we get our hands on it. If you enjoyed this video, like it and hit that subscribe button. Also, check out our price guide, which makes it extremely easy to find the best deals on Apple products updated daily. Be sure to follow us on social media and we'll see you in the next video.